Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Getting Color right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. And I am virtue being joined once again by the man himself, Big Vito LaGrasso. What up, man? It's the B-I-G-V from the L-O-G coming to you live, baby, live from Getting Color. Hey, uh, Virtue, you know, yeah. I know you have the No DQ sign back there. And um, I know you put, you put this show on the, the No DQ, right? Yep. How do we do ratings-wise? I mean, are we pulling some numbers? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it gets more listens than my column gets reads, and I still do pretty well on that. And uh, what about on the, you know, what's his name's thing? I mean, are we, are we pulling some close, are we pulling close numbers? Well, we're we're posting this on the website, but we're not. Right. Aaron's still not posting it on his YouTube channel yet. So yeah, we got to smack him around a little bit. I I think he's into this nature thing, you know, with little doggies yeah. and cats, and you know, he's living that deliverance thing. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm he waiting is. to see. I'm waiting to see dueling banjos on this page. I really am, you know. But oh, uh, it's sad what happened. To, I mean, you know, when a guy goes, you know goes on a hot streak and he finally snatches snatches a young lady's heart, you know, he forgets his boys and it's just That's terrible. True. It's That's terrible. True. It won't happen to us though. We're I mad. like how we get that out of the way early on this show. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get it. You know, we lead off the show, you know, burying the riff. Then he comes up with some stupid faces. And as soon as that first thing in the get up in the morning, he's doing something stupid. Always I just I can't. I just can't no more. All right, well, let's start the show. We're going to kick off with your other buddy, Nia Jack. So oh, she, yeah. she, this is like a role reversal here. She actually called out WWE for using Facetune. So what happened is uh, she called them out for overdoing Facetune, which is an app to edit your face. Right. And she says it's sending the wrong message through enhancing the looks of superstars. WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Nia Jax is not happy with the company overdoing Facetune to enhance the beauty, the natural beauty of the female superstars. Big Vito, this is coming from the same Nia Jax that cakes, and all the divas, sorry, women, that cake their eyelashes on and their mascara and all that makeup. Right. What, do, what do you have to say on this? Is this Nia being in gimmick or just overdoing it, trying to well, throw it back at them because of her TikTok? I think when they shut her off TikTok and they made her <laughs> close her Twitter, <laughs> and then, you know, when you have power, and then you come with a voice of power because you're tag team champion, you think you have power? And then she fires back, you know, about that. Naya, I said it before and I'll say it again. Do your job and stay off of social media. Even though you might have a good grief, you know what I mean, and you've got a good beef going on, just leave it alone. Because as soon as, soon as they're done with you, they're going to shuffle you down the card and you're going to be into Never Never Land and you're never going to get back. And I'm telling you, you are going to be a baby face doing being the TikTok machine I, I love it. I'm looking forward to it. Now, I, I miss your TikToks, girl. You know, get you know, private DM me one. I appreciate you. Man. And, you know, she's nitpicking. What, maybe it's legit. Maybe she's pissed off about how they told her to back away from her social media. I now she's think throwing one back, back at them. And it's going to be interesting. She's a tag champ now with Shayna Baszler. So let's see if that gets her any heat. Because you know how they like to be petty over there. Well, let's put it this way. You know, as easy come, easy go. And it took her a while to get back to the gold. But, I mean, they like this Baszler chick. And I could see, like, a heel turn on Baszler, on Nia Jack, to make her a baby face. You know, and Baszler get over. And then Nia regroups. She gets with her gals. Starts producing some TikToks in the studio. You know, with Tupac and Big E. I'm telling you, it's got, it's got, you know, it's got money written all over it. Yeah. Well, last week, and it's, you know, have to talk about Nia all the time. We briefly did talk about the Matt Hardy injury thing that happened at All Out. Well, since then, we've gotten more information. Uh, his wife, Rebby, said he had a concussion, and she could tell just by watching. Other reports are that AEW, Tony Khan, says he went to the you know medical facility, got evaluated, and there's no report of a concussion. Matt did a promo on Dynamite. Didn't say the word concussion at all, but yet he's recovering from something. What happened is he, he did a fall off onto a table spot with right. Sammy Guevara, and he kind of missed the table, and it looks like the back of his head hit the concrete. Any take on this? Cover up? What's going on? What's the legitimate story? They I mean, are going to protect themselves from being non-concussion protocol 
because after the spill and after he fell, you obviously saw he wasn't coherent and the boys are the, they are their worst enemy and they're going to say they can go. But Tony Khan, being a fan and not a boss, should have stopped the match and said, that's it, we're cutting it, DQ, that's it, due to injury. And should have left it at that. But him being, well, we got to get this in and we got to do this. I'm listening to Matt. Matt's my pal. Long answer, Mr. Khan. You protect the boys. They're their own worst enemy. Yes, he did have a concussion. Yes, he wasn't coherent. Yes, he did go to the hospital. Are they going to deny there was a concussion? Absolutely 100% true. Yeah, that's sad, Vito. I mean, they're denying it. Like, that's nuts. Like, I know it's not legit sports. It's a show. You know, it's but still, like, that's crazy that they have to go about this. Um, any chance, like, do you 100% believe this is all legit and it, it's not a angle? I mean, it, it looks legit based on the fall that he took. There's no way they could have set that up and then fake yeah. this. The right. fall they took was legit. Him cracking his head is legit. The way he got up after that, I mean, you're a good actor. You're a good yeah. pro. But, you know, if they had to, you know, stop the match, let him regroup, then go right to the finish, what does that tell you? That's true. So let's see. We'll, we'll see if there's any more fallout. But, like, he's not cleared to compete right now. So that says something. He's um, not cleared. No, hold on. That's important. So yeah. what does that tell the wrestling fans? If he's not cleared to compete, <laughs> exactly. something is wrong. Yes. Read but the they didn't say the mind. word concussion, which is no. nuts. They're, wow. Pr- they're protecting themselves. Well, moving to WWE, there's been some releases over the weekend or, you know, parting ways. Mike Rotunda, which is Bray Wyatt's father, was a producer. Um, he was furloughed way back when the pandemic happened. He's officially been let go. And their long-term relationship with Gerald Briscoe, which is one of Vince McMahon's right-hand men back with Pat Patterson back in the day, no longer reportedly working for WWE. Um, is this just the way they, they go to cut costs uh, now they don't have to pay these guys? Any takes on Rotunda or Briscoe? I don't know if there was anybody else there might have been. Uh, I think it was the female trainer, Sarah. I'm not sure of her last name. Like Ray she, or Del Ray or something like that? Yeah, yeah. She got released also. Now, and she was with the company for five years. Yeah. The Rotundo being on furlough and then finally released, yeah, I get it. Gerald Briscoe, 36 years. Maybe it was time to go. There was no ceremony, no last hurrah, no nothing. No thank you for your service. Eh, he made his money. He had a job for 36 years. You really can't feel bad for him. There is no retirement plan. There's no 401k. I'm sure he was well taken care of for all these years. He had a job. So good luck in your retirement, Mr. Briscoe. And I will tell you, Gerald Briscoe was my biggest advocate in the WWE when I was there. So good luck in everything you do. Mike Rotundo is another guy who was an agent for me. He also, you know, helped me a lot. You know, sorry to see him go. But, you know, it, it's, you know, when they see, yeah, you've been there too long, maybe you're not getting through. Or maybe your philosophy doesn't agree with t- today's wrestling. And maybe that's the reason why they will let go. Well said, Vito. And I did not know that about Gerald Briscoe. So good to know stuff like that. Um, let's go to SmackDown. Ratings have been gradually going up with Roman Reigns back. The, this past Friday, I think it was 2.26 million, which is the highest it's been in five months. Um, interesting. And so I want to see your take and your thoughts on that and also since we're talking about smackdown paul Heyman is there russo recently vented a little bit online uh, he says he's just sick of seeing the same paul Heyman promo which he just speaks like like he's done with brock lesnar cm punk over the years just the same verbiage the whole time uh he's trying to make it seem different this time around where he tries to make it look like he's a little more subservient to roman than he was brock and roman actually speaks a little bit um, but I have to agree with R- Russo. I, I think it's somewhat of a stale act, and people praise him for this great, and he's good, right? He's always been good, but when you do something for so long, you don't change it up, it does get stale. So I have to agree with Russo. What are your take here on SmackDown ratings and one Paul Heyman? I think it's awesome for SmackDown that the ratings finally went up. That means people are starting to take notice. Roman Reigns is definitely doing something right. They like the heel turn, so the people are happy with that. Um I got to be split on the Paul Heyman thing. You know, 
when you're good at something and you do something well and you're repetitive with it, you know, if there was a crowd, you wouldn't notice it as much because the crowd reaction deviates you from analyzing what Paul Heyman is doing. That's when a good there's point. A, when there's a crowd, you listen to the crowd cheer and boo and get, and Paul's able to interact with them. When he's doing it solo and there's nobody to interact with, it makes it hard and it maybe comes off as stale. But give it a little time, you know, and wait till they go back in front of the fans. If the fans shit on it, then I'd say, okay, it's time for a change, Paul. But keep doing what you're doing because it's gotten over for so long. And I just think it's a lack of fans and lack of interaction that's making it look like it's a stale product. And I've been watching these ratings for like a hawk with Roman back because, you know, I have to back up my article I wrote that they WWE desperately needed him and Lesnar back to increase at least 250 to 500,000 more eyeballs, which I went back and looked at previous ratings to kind of justify that's what they lose when those guys right. aren't on the shows. And so I did a quick little analysis. Now, we've only had three shows with Roman back. He really hasn't been on the shows that much other than this past SmackDown where he actually was at the beginning and came back out at the end. And if I take the eight SmackDowns prior to him you know, coming back, they've incre- you know, did an average to the three shows he's been back. They're right. up about 250,000, which is already getting in the ballpark of what I was talking about. So good for Roman Reigns. Good for WWE. They need it, Vito. Because Raw is sli- sliding. I mean, it's just a matter of time before they bring Lesnar back or have Roman double dip and go over to that show, too. Raw's like 1.7. Terrible. But you know yeah. what, guys? you you, you got to give credit with credits to the WWE is trying. WWE is, is doing what they can with the situation we have. So, you know, let's hope that it's on the up and let's not bury them all the time. You know, give them the benefit of the doubt. And let's try to move on from it. But I will tell you, you know, um, uh, what's her name was traded to Raw. Oh, Which, yeah. Um, Mandy Rose. Because remember, Sonya Deville was written off TV for now right. because of the whole incident that happened with her outside of work. So, yeah, Mandy Rose is now going to be on Raw. Now, the, who is she dating? And She's dating Ziggler. Well, right? I don't know who. I don't know if she's really dating anyone in real life. But I know in the storyline she was dating Otis, the Money in the Bank contract winner right. and i don't know i think otis is still going to be on smackdown so that's interesting from what i heard i think she was dating ziggler he dates everybody so that's possible but i i, I can't confirm that 100 percent. yeah so i mean that's a possibility is she Maybe. going over there for looks for ratings hey the woman they're sending some more sexy blondes over there are they really is that why she's going over there because raw's doing so bad and they want some more I, I females think, over there i think so because what do you have on raw now you have Sasha, Bailey. Oh, they're on uh, SmackDown. Nia, oh, they are. Yeah. Who do we have on Raw? Nia and Shannon can bounce back and forth because they're the tag champs. So you have Asuka. Asuka's the ta- the the Raw Women's Champion. All so right. maybe maybe Mandy Rose mixes it up with her. I don't know. What's the Dana Brooke update? We got any Dana? Oh, no, I have not heard about her for a while. So she's just like I don't even I can't remember what roster she's on right now. Wow, that's terrible. And what Let's about? Take, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, let's take a little break and go to sports, but did you have something else about WWE before we move on? Lana and Natalie, are they supposedly being a tag team? See, I believe they're still on Raw. Um, They've been putting them as tag teams, but I think they've been losing. So I don't know what's up with that, if that's just to, you know, put heat on Lana and have her look silly, especially now. We'll talk about Miro Rusev in our main event today. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be – and we'll talk about how that might affect Lana – when we get to that point. So uh, NBA playoffs, um, LeBron's in the Western Conference Finals. He got there, no problem. Boston edged out Toronto in seven games. So it's going to be Boston versus Miami. Clippers have choked two games in a row now. They're going to game seven Tuesday night. So what do you think on that one now? You think the Nuggets are going to pull it off? I think the Nuggets can beat them. At this point, I do too because of what's happened the last two. But I got to think, Kawhi Leonard's going to monster up and man down, and they are going to win this. But, gosh, it's going to be must-see TV Tuesday night. Yeah, but why hasn't he monstered up and manned up before to oh, end this and oh. get some rest for LeBron? Good point. But I mean, I, I think I know. But the Nuggets have been on the cusp of greatness for the last few years, and they're, not, they're a good basketball team. You know, I think the one team that really, really dis- 
not disappointed me. I think if they were healthy, full strength healthy, I think OKC. No, no, no. The Trailblazers. I'm sorry. Oh, with Lillard? Lillard. Yeah. And Carmelo. I think they could have I think they could have beat the Lakers if they were full strength. I could probably see that. Lillard was on fire too, but then they started getting hurt in that Lakers series. Um football stuff this week too. The, yeah, but you know what? With the with the Lakers, right? The one major player for them that everybody probably forgets is Rondo. And Rondo is the major cog in that offense. And if Rondo's on the floor directing and giving LeBron a break. I mean, Rondo had 17 and 21 points in two games, and he he's directed playing well. He's a monster. I think that's the difference. I think. Uh, what do you think of uh, the Rockets and Dan? Uh, do you? I know they're getting rid of D'Antonio. He's they're separate. They politely parted ways. But if I was the Rockets owner, I would trade Harden and I trade Westbrook and start over. Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the whole shoot first philosophy, no defense. I don't know if it's really – it hasn't really worked. Look where they were at. Yeah, but I think Harden just – I think Harden is a wingman. He's not the main man. And uh, he needs he needs something because he just doesn't get it and he doesn't win. Regular season stat muncher. When he gets to the playoffs, he chokes. And West, Russell Westbrook did not show up in these playoffs. Nope. And they traded for him too. Uh, Paul, Chris Paul, his former had a better, team, almost had a better beat him. Player. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, any thoughts on the NFL week one? Uh, Brady went down, didn't get hurt, but he lost to Drew Brees. Uh, any other thoughts on any of the football games? I saw the score after I came back. I could not believe it was 34 17. I was shocked. Yep. I thought Brady and the boys were going to go do something great. But the, the team that surprised me today was the Patriots, Cam Newton. 155 yards, 75 yards rushing. I don't think Tom Brady has rushed for 75 yards since his rookie season. It's a whole new dynamic for them over there now. I think so. And they won, right? And they did. They played yep. good, you know, and Miami wasn't a slouch. Fitzpatrick always comes up big. So I just think they played a good game. Belichick has a new plan. Um, the Jets were disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I was I was sadly sick, and then um, what was the other shocker today? Uh, Jacksonville won, beat the Colts. Jacksonville beat the Colts. The Eagles lost, and Dallas didn't play. And no, they're playing tonight. And um, playing tonight. A couple other games tomorrow. What do you think about if Dallas loses the first game out of shoot? Dak Prescott, I want forty million, and he loses. Um. Same as like Brady losing today. Now, granted, Breeze is a great competitor and the Saints are pretty good, but I don't know who the Cowboys are playing tonight, to be honest with you. I, I forgot. But um, yeah, the Cowboys got to win. We'll be talking about it next week if they don't. That's for I, sure. I think so. All right. We covered well, we'll go, what about baseball? We got any baseball news? It's We're just kind of waiting for the playoffs. It's, we're grinding here. We're about half, 15 more days away. We're going to have a quick playoff start already because it's only been a short two month season. Now, what do you think about Jason DeGrom winning a third Cy Young this year? I mean, he's awesome, dude. You know, he's the best pitcher in baseball. And, you know, chances are he would have sustained this at a full season. So even though it's only been short, you know, is it a true Cy Young award? Well, I mean, anybody else could have pitched as dominantly so far in a month and a half. So, yeah. I and think he's he a second-half pitcher. And he's yeah. doing it in the first half. And the Mets are scoring runs from him. You know, this is the first time he'll have a winning record. That's good. About time. He's yeah. awesome. But, like, baseball, this regular season is just so strange. So I'm just going to kind of wait it out for the playoffs. That's when it's going to get interesting. I think, like, eight – doesn't eight teams from each division yeah. or each league – yeah, there's going to be a lot of baseball teams that get in it. So it's going to be kind of like a scramble. It's but you want to know the, probably the, disappoint, the most disappointing team has got to be the Yankees. Because they got those two giant studs in Aaron Judge and Gene Carlos Stanton. He's been hurt, Stanton. What? And that guy has got a three hundred million dollar contract, and he can't yeah. get twenty games in. Nuts, nuts! Isn't that crazy how that happens, dude? Yeah, it's crazy. And the one guy who they hated, Clint Frazier, is is killing it. And the one the guy they picked up off the scrap heap, Luke Voigt, is 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 a monster. He's got sixteen homers. Yep, carrying them the best I can. 
and everybody wants to get Lindor from Cleveland. That's gonna be that's gonna be the the, the fire sale this year. Dude, he's gonna go for a huge amount, Vito. He's gonna be the highest paid shortstop maybe of all time. So we'll have to see. The Indians aren't gonna be able to afford him. That's for sure. Do you think the Yankees will pick him up? The Yankees are another team that can afford it. Big market, but yeah, absolutely. Then the Indians will try to probably trade him to get something for him, and then we'll see where he signs. But with that said, any interest in hockey? They're they're going on too. I, I don't really pay attention. Nah, to nobody's paying attention to it. Nah, dead. Next issue, volleyball. Right. No, nothing. <laughs> we got All a couple right. more wrestling topics, so we'll we'll yeah. go to NXT for a little bit because Finn Balor, who was formerly NXT champion way way back, came up to the main roster, was the Universal Champion, although he had to forfeit it because he got hurt right. by Seth Rollins. But he was a main roster guy, and now he's back in NXT, and it's been a year. And he's winning the NXT title. Is this still developmental? Um, it's interesting, too, that they've moved to Tuesdays. I don't know if this is going to be permanent or what. But we'll, that'll tie into our main event in AEW ratings. Uh, what's your take on Finn Balor? I mean, is NXT still considered developmental if Finn Balor is going back there winning a title? I think, my honest opinion, guys, and I want you to follow this. Some guys <laughs> are great at NXT. And some guys should never leave. When you go up to Raw and SmackDown, and you're up there, sometimes you're not as you're a, you're a, a a a small fish in a big pond, right? In NXT, he is a big fish in a small pond, you know. Sure. But he's a he's a more accomplished fish. I think his caliber of wrestling are those guys down at NXT. He fits in better. He's able to do things. He looks like he belongs there, right? It's just like if they put uh, Owens back in NXT. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing it because he drew houses when he was in there. And we might, the way they go. I mean, they had Charlotte down there for a little while. You know, the whole WrestleMania thing, being their champion. So, and going to Tuesday nights, remember we talked about this, them splitting 700,000 and 700,000. So now I believe that NXT would they get almost eight or nine hundred thousand? Yeah, it was over eight. It was like eight hundred thousand or at least. So if you got eight hundred thousand, and then our next topic, we'll talk about the ratings. Yeah, I think it's better for wrestling. You got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You don't need to compete head to head. It's not those times anymore. That's a good point, and it's it is different time because a lot of people consume their wrestling, you know, via YouTube, internet, and don't even watch the shows normally. So, but I mean, I know ratings still matter. There's still demos and advertisers still care, but I keep knocking my earbuds out, but I'm ready for this main event here. Main because, event time, main event time. You know, AEW unopposed, they just did finally over 1 million viewers this past Wednesday. Um, Rusev also deb- debuted as Miro as the best man for this Kip Sabian. I don't know who this Kip Sabian is and, Miro should be above him, but, you know, we'll see where this goes. What is your take on Miro? Is this going to affect how WWE uses Lana? And, of course, AEW hits over 1 million viewers. Unopposed, though. Thoughts, you know? I think that they started Miro off low with Kip Saban to build him up to be something great. I can My take kid. that. It's a good point. Okay. Why start him off on top like they did with the other two big guys? And then they went down the tubes. So I think him coming in under the radar, unannounced, no hype, no nothing. There he goes, shows up, tells Vince to shove it up his ass. Great promo. Great promo, right? Yeah. So now people have got a, a reason to watch because they do like him. They love him as Rusev. I think that they're going to top a million viewers this upcoming week. I believe that they're going to top a mil. Now, this week, they're bumped to Thursday, I think, because of basketball, but I, they'll be unopposed again. So that'll be interesting. I think it's awesome that they picked him up. I think they're going to do some great things. And a lot of people are bitching about them taking the uh, WWE leftovers. But those leftovers, some of them were missed you so badly that they should have been top stars. And yeah. they dropped the ball on them. Rusev was probably one of the biggest ones they dropped the ball on. Twice. That guy was over. Yeah, twice, twice over. The whole time when he was a heel there with the tank at WrestleMania and all that. And then, of course, the Rusev Day thing. They just were having none of him being a top guy over there. I wrote an article, by the way, the best debuts in AEW this year. So that's over on NoDQ.com. 
you'll have to go check it out and see who I put number one. Yeah, get your plugs in, guys. Get your plugs for No DQ and Virtue. I, I so we'll, we'll see where Miro goes. Like, I'm interested. And in, hopefully this Kip Sabian thing leads to something. And, you know, you know, just don't want to bring him in and give him a title shot right away and make people think just because you were Rusev in WWE, you come in and you jump line. So we'll see where it goes. Um, he good came for them in with a find... different look. Long yeah. Hair. Yeah. And he had, like, his pajama pants on and all that stuff. But anyways, any other topics? you want to talk about um, that came up? Uh, no, I just think, uh, how did Jericho react to uh, losing to uh, Orange Cassidy? He, this is what they did. He basically fluffed it off on Dynamite, and he claimed that him and Hager are now going to start teaming up and being in the tag division. <laughs> so ah, yeah, they put him over, like they said. Yep. Jericho's going to go win the tag titles, and it's going to be forgotten about. Pretty much. Yeah, Pretty much. And that's where they're going. All right, so that's done. Yeah. Um, is Sexy Sammy, is he in the doghouse? Well, I mean, Matt Hardy's been getting hurt at his expense a couple times now, so he very well could be, so we'll have to see where all that goes. But uh, he's still he, part of the inner circle, still part of Jericho's group. Because he's not as, he's not as um, viable. And he's not Jericho's right-hand man, you know, being the sexy guy. And, like, all of a sudden he's going with Hager. And I think they're pushing him out of the limelight a little bit. So I think he's got some heat on him. Oh, who, Sammy? Yeah. I well, mean, Hager, Hager and Jericho are teaming up, though. Like, they're, they're teaming up. For no, the no, no. What I'm saying is I think that Sammy has some heat on him, especially with the uh, oh, gotcha. uh, Sasha thing coming back, the chair thing with Hardy. Hardy getting hurt again, him doing some stupid stuff. I just think it's all coming out that he's uh, a little bit inexperienced for the spot that he got. And we'll see what happens. I mean, sometimes we revisit topics as more news develops during the week. But that's it, Vito. Another great show. I know people definitely want to hear this. So we're going to, you know, I got to upload it, send it to Noelle so she can get it up on Twitch and Anchor. Oh, we were supposed to do Twitch this week. Are we delaying that one more week? One more week. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. But in case people were wondering, yeah, stay tuned for that. So, Big Vito, you want to do any of your final plugs? No, I just want to thank everybody for, for uh, chiming in. And uh, I will say something about the lawsuit. I know it was uh, a tough thing for us. Um, just, um, guys, keep your heads up. I appreciate everybody. I worry about everybody. I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm going to be okay. And uh, we got something special coming up. Uh, look, look for it on uh, on my brand, and I'm going to put it blasted everywhere. No DQ will have it also. And, um, you know, we'll move on from this and uh, we'll make things happen. Well, thank you, Big Vito. Another great show as always. Folks, you can follow Big Vito over on Twitter at the Big Vito brand. You can follow me, Virtue, over there as well at no DQ underscore Virtue. Just be sure you check out everything over on thebigvitobrand.com. But this has been Getting Color. It's always exciting to do this show each and every week with Big Vito. And you know what, folks? We will be back again next time. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. And also share the link to this. We want more people to watch each and every week. Thank you. Again, thebigvitobrand.com. See you next time.